Hello there. In this video I want to look on some film cameras. I know right now in the world we have a great digital camera which make very fast, very easy to shoot, but I think with using film camera it still gives us some of this nostalgia, start giving something different approach that is some people forgot about this. And of course I definitely I'll shoot all the time the digital and I think that is a way to go, mirrorless digital. However, I have some of these film cameras that sometimes I like to put it film inside and go on photo shoot. And it's maybe a reason because each shot before I take it, you actually need to think, you actually need to understand how the speed uh, aperture speed, uh, shutter speed or other things, how they will affect your shot, okay? How the composition, you need to think about this because your shot may be, oops, your film may be have it what is it, 12, 24, 36 frames only? And when you shoot, you cannot see instantly. So you need to develop that film to see after how it's going. So it's required a little bit more future vision to see how it's all come up. And it's all affecting. Beside that, you cannot change on a flight a lot of stuff. For example, if you have your film, like 400 ISO, you put it inside, you cannot change on the middle. You need stuck with this specific film. So it will require you to think ahead what are you going to photo shoot where and uh, surprise is actually not very expensive what are we going to look today it is as example these two cameras of course i shot with many different ones for example this is one of my first canon film camera i shot before with a bunch of russian cameras and this is uh, automated it's very easy just point and shoot as well it's not that hard to use it but this one is total manual they don't even have it a meter inside so let's look and see something about these cameras. You know, why you want to shoot manual? What is it, how you can select manual camera? What is the best selection? This, I want to share some of my knowledge of this. And this is two cameras. It's a Fed and Zenith. They come from the Soviet Union era. And you know, you notice I have tons of different heads be behind me and I think it's appropriate to wear head from that time. So kind of imagine our era, what we're going to speak about this. And we'll start probably speaking with first with our Fed One camera. And a Fed camera, um, it is named after Felix Edmundovich Dzerzhinsky. He's a very hardlined Bolshevik who actually joined just before the revolution. He joined Bolshevik party, but he always was with the Polish and Latvian going with uh, all the stuff. He was going very... Um, hard hard line in a way you cannot deviate and he did not hesitate to just eliminate people who doesn't like it he actually was one of the who created uh, first concentration caps in soviet union which is later germans copy to create their own concentration camps he also was father and was putting on creating organization called cheka which is was on charge to find those uh, oppositions and kill them, eliminate them, to find some criminals. Later, actually, Cheka become NKVD, later KGB, and now FSB. So it's all these different organizations. So he was father, and I remember from time when I was um, kind of in Border Patrol, it's which part of KGB, we always have his portraits there, kind of. And people like that person because he is very strong, clear, and people follow them. People call him before uh, Zelezny Felix, which is mean Iron Felix, um, kind of like bird. So it's going after him. So people worship almost those guys, people without understanding that behind them it's this very blood trail going because he is uh, directly and indirectly involved. Probably over a million people was killed about this. So on this camera, because his strong character name after him. So this is one part, dark part of this. The second need to understand that um, it, around the revolution time, 1917-20s, around this time was civil war in Soviet Union and Russia, and a lot of adults was killed. So many, many um, homeless kids was on the street all over the place. So what they done, they take them, put it in orphanages. And, you know, kids sitting in an orphanage, it's not going with Soviet Union ideology because they were saying who does not work, don't eat. And so we'll make them work. And the first cameras was actually assembled fed on one of those kids' orphanage. 
So overall we can say specifically after third camera behind you have at least dark history. You have the um, mass murdered person who actually named it after and you have a child, children labor who put it part this together. So this is kind of history and maybe some of this history was affecting how you will treat the camera. Hopefully not, but overall it's a very beautiful piece if you take all the history out. So the Fed was uh, created part of the after Zenith camera and a copy with a Leica 2. And if you ever hold the Leica 2 in your hands and you hold them together, you'll find unbelievably similarity because they actually copy one pair of one. And uh, one people say is a knockoff or whatever. And when the revolution happened, every country kind of was uh, turned away except Germany. Germany sent a lot of engineers. It's actually have a special city on the uh, Volga River, which is was Germans uh, engineers was living. In other ones, it's like settlement there. And uh, a lot of German engineers coming and they brought technology and they helped build factory and all this stuff. And the lake, of course, was copying from German camera in Russia because it's what the engineers coming from. So in some cases, if you hold Leica and Fed 1 or Zorki, you will find out unbelievably like one to one threads, position, everything is very close. So if you ever want to have it shoot on a original Leica 2, you don't need to spend thousand dollars on this camera. You can buy these ones, it's around around fifty dollars each. You can buy one of that camera, which is very close to resemble to that, and it's give you this um, kind of experience to work with this. Also, keep in mind because it was produced in Soviet Union, and um, sometimes quality may be not applied. And I will tell you how to look for the better quality of the camera when you're getting. So, okay, this is a Fed One. Okay. And uh, House 8 was copied after Leica 2, which is used a parallax focusing system. To actually use this camera, you take the lens and you can see you kind of take a lens and you pull out and you kind of need to lock this lens. And when you lock, it's set. So now it's ready to shoot. To set properly aperture, you just need to go on top of the lens example here and change inside a lens. So you can move it and you can set aperture wider of this. Okay. Next, also it's a little bit help right here. If you look on aperture, if you had questions, give you what is focus range. But also next, what we have it, it's a shutter speed. Shutter speed located on the top and can change. And it's going 25, 50, 100, 250, and 500. You also have it blob, which is mean when you press, it's open. When you release it, it will close. But interesting things, because mechanic based on a Leica, it's got one Kind of requirement. You must wind up camera before you change your shutter speed. If you try to change your shutter speed before wind up, most likely you could damage some mechanics inside. So right here we're set and let's set for example 100 and you can see right here arrow on the top and it's 100. So we wind up and now it's ready. You ready? And there you go. You have it shot. So this is how you are simple, simple, simple operation. Wind up, point and shoot. If you need focus, of course, focus rings, you can just, but one thing, keep it in mind when you set your focus, that focus located, you need to look through the special uh, viewfinder. You notice that two of them, one, if you look through, you'll see this yellow circle and you kind of a little bit offset of other ones and you need to bring them together. So it's based on parallax and parallax is like your two eyes. So they're on a side. And when you focus to one single point, you eliminate. And this is what help you to set properly focus on your camera so you can adjust all of this. OK, uh, next, this is how it work. And another window right here, this is actually work to uh, frame properly because it's a little bit on the middle and show right size. And this is two windows for in the future camera and some they move it to single one. But on this one, so you have a two ones. And remember, one, you focus, and one, you actually position your camera to take shot. The very unusual about this Leica 2 cameras is well, how you're loading film in. And that is a special way to do it. So let's look. Most cameras, you're probably familiar if you ever hold uh, um, your film camera, like for example, the Canon or other ones, they just open on a side. You open, you bring your camera up, you take your film, you place it inside, drag to this point, 
explosive and it's ready to shoot. And it's very convenient, very easy to use. With the Leica 2 and a clones of those cameras like Fed1 or Zorki, it's actually loading from the bottom. Also, that was uh, related same was to the Zenith 3, not 3M, was same thing, so you load it from the bottom. To do this, you're going to they open on the bottom, so you take it, latch, you kind of twist it, and you open. And you can see right here we have an hour loading area. So first, we'll need to take spool and pull out right here. This is our coming spool. And what do you do? Usually you take, expand the film, and put it inside tight and put back. But it's not just any film. The problem is you need to put just between this line. You need to put it right there. So it's meaning you need to take film, extend, and cut off like right here, 11 centimeters long. So you have very long things. And after you cut off, you place your film down like this, and you place it inside. The only the problem what I find out by using this, some of the film, like these canisters, they're a little bit tight to fold it in. They kind of start hanging on the edges. So you need to be very careful or find smaller size or plastic sometimes work because not always you can see right here a little bit even worn out with my use because some of those films will um, not fit properly. So be careful when you have this one and just keep this in mind. And this is probably the biggest minus for me. It's how I load this camera because it's a little bit harder to load and unload. Otherwise, it's very nice, very compact, good camera. And I like it this for this by the size because you are loading film and it's ready to shoot. A um, couple things keep it in mind about this camera. This one specifically, it's a Fed one and it was produced like 50s in a later 50s the all most cameras was produced up to serial number 700,000 around this area this is 600 uh, plus so it was closer to end of the production and you also can tell this by its end of the production because you can see right here where is a release button it's have it kind of like almost a ball to keep it inside and thread is more standard than other ones on the first edition and a Leica, you have kind of like a round um, trigger there on the top, so it will look a little bit different. The reason why I select latest to the production, because I select camera that I can take and shoot. And because it's a younger camera, it's have less mileage on this, so it's a less worn on the parts. As well, some um, modifications was applied to these mechanics to improve and uh, some of those most internal. Uh, what's happening when a Second World War and Russia come to the East Germany, they take over and they took some of the factories of the Leica factories. And that is when they take more um, kind of cameras from there, more analyze equipment and everything. And that did affect, because if you notice on the history, so after Second World War, start producing a little bit different offset of the cameras with newer technology, what they also grab it from there. And in some cases, it's kind of interesting because Fed or Zorki, in this case, which is very, very similar, just produced in different factories. For example, they are, at one point, they actually put it even name Leica on the top and tried to sell them as a Leica. Uh, for example, one of the factory with a fake Leicas was discovered by Germans in 1942 when it come to the Minsk. So they found a factory there and some of those old fake lakes, lakers kind of around. And, um, but overall, this is very simple, use the camera. So you kind of open lens, focus, set your shutter speed, uh, whatever you needed, aperture, and it's ready. You can use it flash with this, but it's have a little bit limitation of how you can use it because it is um, not hot shoe right here, it's just normal cold shoe, so you put it flush if you need on top and use it with a blob or other things. Okay, this is about the Fed camera. Um, very interesting history behind, very interesting behind the name, assembly, and all this stuff. So that was producing till about mid-1950s by the model, and after that was replaced with the new models, more advanced models. How I say, I like this camera, but I found 
if you actually want to photo shoot with full manual, the Zenith 3M, it's a little bit better for me. And I hope it's better for you on several um, few reasons on this, okay, several reasons on that one. First off, 3 Zenith 3, not 3M, was loading bottom loader. M was modified, so now, if you notice right here, we put a lever on top, you can open, and it's loading like other different, uh, more modern cameras. So loading from the top, which is make much, much easier to insert film. So you pull this up on top, put it your film, drag, place it, hold right there, lock, and it's ready to shoot for you. The both cameras was using our horizontal type of the shutter. Horizontal type of the shutter, if you notice right here, it is two curtains. So let me do this. Again, we want to rewind, wind up before we change any speed. And again, notice the wind up, you don't need a kind of scroll. You have it nice lever. It's another thing. So what I like about this, and I will go to set to the blob right there. And notice what's happening. If I press once, it's open first um, curtains, and now it's second curtains closing. The one thing also kind of keep it in mind that if camera without blob, if you want to curtains fully open, when you shoot, for example, with flash, that it will be speed of the 30. So on both of these cameras, if you want to use it flash, you must set to the 30. And you actually notice right here, you have it X letter by the 30, which is meaning it is a flash set. So let's, um, this kind of small things about the shutter speed. Just uh, overall, one thing I want to show you also difference on the shutter speed that, um, again, the speed right here was up to 500 and it's because the horizontal shutter speed. On the new cameras, you're using more as the vertical type of the shutter and it's a metal, not curtain, so they can achieve quite a bit high shutter speed because of this. Okay, that is about shutter speed. Next, let's look on the options and you'll notice they're on very, very similar. So again, you'll need to wind up if you want to go ahead and switch speed and you can rotate. If you go in the opposite way and you hit the end, don't force it, you can break it again. So right here, it's a 125 shutter of the speed set. And now it's ready. Again, we can point focus. We can set our aperture and you can see again on the lens right here is where we set our aperture. There's where we set our focus. We cannot change ISO on this because ISO is related to the what film you put it before inside. And now you're ready. Just point and shoot. And one thing nice about this, because it's a um, mirrored camera, so you can see through only one viewfinder. And same, it's used a little bit different differential the focusing system, so you can point and focus with alignment as well. And when you're ready, just point and click and you took your shot. So very nice camera. It's also provide for synchronization for our flash. And when it's provide synchronization for the flash, you'll notice on top, we'll have it 2X and M, which symbolize X will be for electronic flashes and M for older type flashes that require a little bit time till they're going to full um, bright. And if you remember, maybe those single use flashes when you put it and inside have a teeny tiny wire, so you push and poof, kind of flush it by burning inside. So this is what for the M, they require a little bit preheat time. So the, it's meaning curtains won't open all the way instantly. It will give it a little bit time to warm up. But most time you probably will use the electronic flash if you ever used, and it will be on an X. We also have a self timer up front of the Zenith 3M, which we don't have it on some of these cameras. And that is nice if you take pictures. Both cameras have it mount on the side, which is, was um, with an original Leica. And I'm not necessarily like it if you're using heavy um, a lens, it's kind of a bad place to put it. But again, this is what they was done originally. And of course, all new cameras, most mountains, you will have it on the middle to center for using with heavier lens. 6870, I don't have it a precise time on this date. Uh, I do have a box come with this when I purchased, but the box is from a little bit different cam, well, from same Zenith 3M, but it's not from this version. And the reason is why, because you'll notice right here, it is actually said in English Zenith 3M. It's not in a Cyrillic. And also on the back, you see in English says made in USA because this is export model. What is meaning that that model was created of the Zenith to sell outside the Soviet Union. 
and I selected purposely export version. For me, living like 20 something, 30 years in Soviet Union, um, we always have a distinguished, I remember, because the product that produced for sale outside the country, it always was higher quality because they kind of need to show up, hey, look how Soviet Union is great. So it's meaning all the products was gone through the heavier testing, they was using better materials on them, and they was using better technology in some cases on them, so more expensive. And many times if you have a camera that made for sale inside the Soviet Union versus on camera for sale for outside Soviet Union, it will be greater quality for export models, better materials, how I say, better quality control and producing on a factory. And because this box has a come with this camera, but it's all in Russian and you can see it's not a says for the expert. So this is the obviously from different cameras, but model export model probably will be about look same as this one. Um, other interesting fact about this, the price on the cameras, how I said before, or if you buy them on eBay, you can find them very cheap for about $20, but I won't trust them. Um, look for some re reliable reseller who have it, uh, good reviews as well, but most important, look how clean and how many they sell. Most of those people know very well what they sell, the equipment, um, so they will price according to this. And it's about $50 plus minus whatever shipping occurred. And also, if you want to shoot, uh, get it for shooting, not more like putting on display and look on them, just look on the serial numbers. This again, this is about 6,000, it's a closer the younger camera is what I was looking so it is have it uh, less work miles on this also it's a very good condition as well um, so this has allowed me to be sure the shutter speed is accurate as I put it together because with a um, if camera old and it was a little bit rust and other things the springs inside does not work as well so your shutter speeds will be slow or inconsistent which is a little bit worse than that so then you will have some problems. Um, I mentioned some of the lenses that that's pull-up lens and other ones. Uh, Soviet Union lenses, there was mostly glass produced in, in Germany with higher quality and it was assembled this. Many of them like this copy from Leica or from the Pentax or other uh, cameras and lenses by itself, they are very beautiful, nice lenses. They give it nice bokeh, they give it nice less distortion and other things. To the point, maybe sometimes you want to just take, remove this lens and use it on your new mirrorless camera. And you actually can do this. All what you need to do is purchase some adapter like this and then you put a screw in. And this is, for example, for um, Canon Mountain EF, not the new R. So it's EF Mountain. You can put it lock and they have a different type of mountains for different cameras. Uh, however, this one M42 and this is M39, so it's a little bit smaller threat. This is specifically one work on this lens. It's worked for more Helios and a little bit other ones. But again, you can get it those um, adapters in work. And by the way, till I have it opening, one thing I want to mention with the Zenit 3M, if you never worked before, um, you'll notice if you try to take a picture, you won't see it. It will be dark. And the reason why, if you notice right there, the mirror is in a position and because it's you don't wind up so what do you need to do you need to wind your camera move the film wind the spring and now you'll notice the mirror drop down so now you can look on this and see through the camera and it's also let you know the camera is ready to shoot and uh, if it does not okay let me light right there so it's ready to shoot so now you can take a picture otherwise it will be very dark inside and sometimes if you don't know it's maybe confused thinks the camera is broken no you just need to wind this up okay so this is kind of look on this okay um so what's happening sometimes you'll take camera and you try to photo shoot but you don't know what should my um, speed be exposure what's my aperture should be set on this for example i have film which is like 400 right here and 100 here but i can put this on the beginning and i say well probably 400 will be more universal so i will use the 400 here but you're going outside or inside and 
confused. So in a, if you want to go full automatic, you can buy one of those old, and I have it somewhere older, a light meter, so you can just mirror this way. Or it's much easier if you have it your cell phone, and on a cell phone, you can go ahead and just use it like light application. And this is a light meter applications, which allow you to just look around. And you'll notice that as you're going around, you can set your ISA. So we can go and set like, for example, 400 ISA. And now it's tell me property. So right here, for example, I can go up to 500 only. And I can lock to and it's tell me you needed 1.8 or 2 right here. So if I will shoot on 400 speed around there, this will be a little bit too bright. It's kind of let me know. So I needed to change my the other settings. And sometimes you not always you won't have this ability to uh, shoot perfectly. In that case, you maybe was consider to take some ND filters or other things for this to have a little bit more wide range when you're shooting. Okay, so that is about all about these cameras. How I said before. Um, be sure you buy the camera if you're doing four photo shoots that is younger a little bit. Try to look on some export models. Also, um, looking on some history of the cameras, how that was developed, what producing copy, that is give you additional maybe feeling to that camera. Because when you're folding in your hand, you not just fold camera, you're folding uh, part of the history, history of the was created, where is it come, where is the name come, and what there was meaning, how many lights it was affecting by this digital, by the normal cameras. Well again, thank you for watching these videos. I hope it's really a bit inspire you and give it some information about the cameras, film cameras, how to use. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up on a YouTube. Um, subscribe to receive more videos and notifications if you like it. And a great thanks for those people who are supporting me on the YouTube channel and especially on the Patreon channel. And thank you for watching this video.